Nick Ferrari at breakfast. Call 0345 60 60 973. Text 84850. Nick Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. What constitutes a hate crime and who do we, as in the legal system, who do we need to protect? Just bear those two questions in mind as I read you the work of the Law Commission. Now, if you're not aware, that's an independent body recommending law reform. And it said it wants to take a look at hate crime to see whether there are any gaps in the legislation as part of a package of measures announced by the Home Office. You'll hear more on this later today. And some of the areas that they're going to focus on, well, let's work our way through it, shall we? Women, absolutely we should have that. So of course, you can't just go after elderly people. Absolutely, they should be. You can't have a crack one in then. Goths. I mean, how often are goths abused on the street? I'm, I'm not one. I've never been one. Neither of my children were into it. I don't, I don't think I've ever known. I've ever known. I'm sure I've known somebody who's a goth. But do you regularly hear of incidents of goth bashing or goth abuse? Do police forces up and down the land? Much going on? Yeah, we've had another six goths shouted out on the high street. Oh, not another load. And men. Men. Misogyny, prejudice against women, and misandry. I didn't know that. Did you know that? I didn't know that till this morning. That's prejudice against men. Will we consider by the review, as well as alternative lifestyles such as goths, race, religion, trans identity, sexual orientation and disability, the so-called protected characteristics? Home Secretary Sajid Javid said, hate crime goes directly against the long-standing British values of unity, tolerance and mutual respect. I'm committed to stamping this sickening behaviour out. Well, how many... How many goths have been abused? It's, I don't know. Let's turn to Dr Loretta Trickett, who's from the Nottingham Law School, is an expert in criminal law and researches in this particular area. Are goths the victim of hate crime, Doctor? Good morning. Hello. Um, yes, they are. Um, in what way? And so, well, there was a very high-profile murder some years ago of Sophie Lancaster, where um, the judge in court actually said it was a hate crime. Well, that's and murder. That they've we... been targeted on the. Well, it is murder, yeah, but got, it's so murder we've got laws motivated to protect already, by prejudice. Don't we? Yes, we do. But what we're obviously looking at, what the law commission is looking at, is when people are targeted on an aspect of their identity for a crime, because there will always be a baseline crime to hate crime. It doesn't exist on its own. Right. Um, then that are, they are a group, and there have been police forces that have actually included subculture, for example, uh, in their recording practices so far. So certainly that is, is a problem against uh, young people that do identify with the goth subculture. And um, Sophie Lancaster's mother has campaigned for that to be included for a number of years now. What would constitute a hate crime against elderly people? Well, hate crime against elderly people, in my opinion, would, would, would sometimes take the, 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 the same sort of tone that we see against disabled people. Uh, and previously we've had uh, a problem with recognising hate crime against disabled people because it's often thought that people are targeted on the basis of vulnerability. But actually, if you are choosing someone as a victim on an aspect of their identity because you are prejudiced against them in some way, you think they're an easier target for you to commit crime against, then that may be an example of hostility. And that's something that the Crime Prosecution Service has grappled with for a number of years. But um, there, that there are calls to make those sorts of crimes a hate crime if they're targeted on the basis of somebody's identity. But what sort of um, crime are we talking... Are, are these people being robbed or are they being shouted at? I don't understand well, what Well, there's, you... there's a huge amount of elder abuse. It's not Hate crime isn't just about being shouted at. It's not just about verbal abuse. Right. What, what, what we're talking about is where somebody is targeted for a crime on a, um, a, an aspect of their identity in some way. And that is because the perpetrator believes that that person is um, a lesser person than them sometimes. It's because they believe that, you know, um, they, they are less worthy. It is because they believe that um, they don't like them in some way, an aspect of their identity. So when we're talking about hostility, what we're talking about is the offender's motivation for but targeting we... a particular person for a crime. But why would we, Doctor, why would we need additional laws? Because if someone robs from an elderly woman, or indeed an elderly man... Well, that's what hate we... crime law is. That's what hate crime law is. We don't need additional laws. Well, that's we what exactly. So why, 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 I know you're not on the Law Commission, but why would the Law Commission be thinking about new laws when we've quite rightly got laws in place that protect Well, they're people? not used, though. 
they're not used there, Nick. This well, is a problem. There's those whole, there's doctor, whole ranges do- doctor, of abuse do- do- that aren't picked up. Doctor, there, are, there are whole doctor, parts of abuse Lord. that are not picked up against people. Doctor, and if this I is steal a way of dis- looking at that. Do- doctor, if I steal a handbag from a disabled woman in a wheelchair this afternoon, I'm going to get done. We don't need additional laws. Well, yes, we do actually. Why? Because what we need to do, because we need, you, you don't seem to understand, you don't seem to understand what hate crime is, and I think that is a, a real misconception on the part of the general public. But, they don't understand what hate crime is. They think it is about a pure hatred of people. What it's about is you're targeting a person on the basis of their identity, but it's and vulnerability, some way. and it's, that's it's, what makes it. Well, it isn't vulnerability. I it just is vulnerability. That. It is I about hostility. If I steal that woman's handbag, I don't hate disabled people. I just, I'm a vi- an evil, vile yes, person who sees I, she's I vulnerable. You if you give me a moment, I just take you back to what I've just said to you about what hate crime is. It's not just about hatred. It is about prejudicial targeting of people. That's what it's about. It's not about pure hatred. And I think that is a real misunderstanding sometimes a deliberate misunderstanding, actually, on the part of the general public and of the people who don't seem to understand what hate crime is and what the police and the Crown Prosecution Service, when they prosecute them, are trying to achieve. But if I'm a police officer, how am I now... And I, um, let's use the example that someone steals a handbag from a woman in a wheelchair. Am I treating it now as a robbery? Am I treating it as additionally as a hate crime? But what, why do I need yeah, it? So that- should I explain how it works then? So yeah. if, if somebody commits an offence against um, a disabled person, then obviously that would be called in as a robbery. But if it's found that that person has a hostility towards um, disabled people... Well, and hang they on, that's pretty hostile. That if, I nick her past, if I nick a handbag, that's pretty hostile. Well, it is, yeah, but I... hate crime laws are talking about the targeting of people, on s- selecting them out. So basically what that means is that I, as an offender, would be more likely to offend against a disabled person because either I dislike disabled people or I believe that they are an easier right. target for me to exploit. Lastly, and that's men. what trying to stamp out. Men, how, how can they... I get, I get how they, you can be guilty of misogyny. How can you be guilty of misandry, get hatred, uh, prejudice, I should say, against... Well, that is going to be extremely rare, quite frankly, So why do we have... I know, I know you've not put this together. Why do we have it? It's absurd. Well, we're not... When, well, the Law Commission's got to look at that. We're not necessarily... To be honest, most of that was to do with the fact that there was such an outcry from some sections of society about the need to, select, to protect women from street harassment... Which oh, I agree with that, of course. ..often on a regular basis. Yeah, of course we need that. It was, it was considered that we need to put in about gender. But there will sometimes be... They're much rarer, but there will sometimes be. There was an example of a serial killer who targeted men, a, a female serial killer, some years ago that targeted men because she had a hatred of men. So I guess what the Law Commission are looking at is bringing in gender, and then if it's a crime against a woman, it would be misogyny, and if the fact suggested it was a crime against a man targeted purely on the basis that he was a man, then it would be misandry. But I think that's going to be much less likely. But, of course, that would be more inclusive to have gender as, as a category, and that's what they will look at. How extraordinary. I'm very grateful for your background. Thank you. Dr Loretta Trickett is from the Nottingham Law School and an expert in criminal law and particularly in this area. Twelve minutes after eight, listening to that, Mike Buchanan, who's the leader of the Justice for Men and Boys Party and is a commentator for the men's rights movement. I imagine you're going to say that we need laws to guard against misandry, are you? Good morning. Good morning, Mick. Um, I think this is really quite ironic. I mean, most people have never heard of misandry, which is, yeah, which is interesting because it's, it's actually very commonplace, whereas misogyny is very rare. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Where is mis- misandry common? Well, for example, in the entire operations of the state, which is, so, which is one of the ironies. Well, just, just walk of, me through of, one of, this, of the operations. Of this, sorry? Just walk me through one of the operations where there is, okay. is, is misanthropy. Okay, the, the, the treatment of fathers being denied access to their children after, after divorce. And it's one of the drivers of male suicide. Right. Um, but but, but the, the state... But this is where uh, communication, yeah, the, unfortunately, breaks down, isn't it? It's, it's not a sort of government mandate. It's where mum and dad can't get on. Right. But, but, but the point is that the state doesn't address that. The state doesn't... Uh, the state is all over uh, trying to stop female genital mutilation and doesn't give a damn about male genital mutilation. Well, um, otherwise, there are certain so, 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 so if you just go back to the criminal justice system, Nick, yeah. if men were treated as leniently as women... In the, you know, in the criminal justice system, five out of six men in British prisons today would not be there. Mm. There's such a hatred of men. I mean, m- men get punished severely while women get suspended sentences. Right. Uh, you know, on, and on you, can point to example, you can point to examples of that, can you? Oh, we, 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 in the last five years, Nick, we must have, we must have uh, uh, 
publicised, uh, you know, 100 cases. It is just endemic that, that women will get uh, suspended sentences where men will go to prison for several years uh, so for acts of violence and, and, and so on. You're, you're suggesting and they, to... You know, and, and, you know, and false rape allegations. They, they, they destroy men's lives, and the women walk, walk, walk free from court with a suspended sentence. Right. And that's an act of misandry, is it? Misandry. Yes, because cause the, the, the state... No, it's not. Uh, it's uh, not uh, just a woman who's gone to bed with someone and woken up and realised that their boyfriend's not going to be very happy about it, so they're seeking to worm their way out. No, of no, 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 no. no. These, 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 these are women who, who aim to destroy men's lives, and because there's no anonymity, right? For, for, for so men just, to, just to, mean, clarify, to clarify, to clarify, then men are as vulnerable as elderly people. Um, I, I think they are. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean just going back to the, about the rape issue, just a, just an allegation of rape against you, let's say, Nick, yeah. would have you on on the front pages of the newspapers. Possibly, I don't know. It depends who the person was. All right, uh, interesting speaking with you, Mike Buchanan. Thank you. You're a leader of the Justice for Men and Boys Party with some strong views, and we'll return to those in a moment. Also. Coming up after the news and travel here on LBC, the report that says that mental health mental ill health issues, sorry, ill health issues are costing 300,000 sick days per annum in Whitehall. More on that after the LBC News headlines at 8.15 with Simon Conway. Thank